So in this video, I'll be talking through how I built this reptile enclosure that has an aquarium built into it and it's for ma my mangrove monitor. So we'll start by looking at the sump. Um, sump is pretty much a aquarium that acts like a filter that sits underneath the main aquarium. So I'm cutting up some glass here. Um, these would be used for the compartments of the sump and this divides the, um, the sump into different sections with different filtering purposes. So here I'm making a guide so that my diamond drill bit could rest in it without sliding around and I could um, drill some holes into the glass. So when using diamond drill bits you need to make sure you put water or oil, some sort of lubricant and you don't want to press down on the drill too hard or else that will crack the glass. So before siliconing you need to remove all the grease and dust from the silicon doesn't stick very well. So the first piece of glass I put in is the largest piece and it's the one with holes. That piece divides the sump into the back and front portions and after that I'm putting in um, three more dividers and those separate the front part of the sump into four different sections. So from left to right the water would flow and it's forced to go through those dividers and when they do that they have to pass through a sequence of media. So now we're going to shift towards looking at the structural parts of the enclosure. Um, I built this tall stand that sits behind the aquarium um, so that the top of this stand is about level with the top of the aquarium and it's going to be for the base of the land area of the enclosure. The aquarium itself is also sitting on a pine stand and underneath that aquarium is where the sump is going to sit. The rest of the enclosure is made out of foam ply, so there's a type of plywood that's got a phenolic plastic covering over the top that makes it very water resistant. They're usually used for um, concrete foam work, but I find that they work very well for reptile enclosures, especially if you need it to be waterproof. So after I've cut all the foam ply to size, I've assembled it, it's like putting up a box. Um, just need to make sure that you pre-drill the holes and countersink in, so that when you tighten the screws it's not going to crack the foam ply. The foam ply part of the enclosure is pretty similar to all the other reptile enclosures I've done and I've made videos on those. So if you want to know how to make um, holes for the vents and the sliding glass tracks, um, check out my other videos. So here you're looking at the piece of foam ply that sits on top of the tall stand and this is going to be the land area for the enclosure. So this part is the plumbing of the sump in the aquarium. So first thing I need to do is cut all the PVC pipes to length. I'm using 25mm PVC pipes um, and when connecting them I use uh, PVC cement so that um, that prevents them from falling out or leaking. So the pipe that returns water back to the aquarium from the sump, um, I decided to use a flexible uh, vinyl hose. That way I don't have to worry about measuring and cutting everything exactly to size um, to get a good fit. So the plastic hose, I'll need to fit it onto an adapter that um, connects the hose to a threaded insert that I could uh, thread into the PVC. Another benefit of using the flexible hose instead of the rigid PVC pipes is that um, I could lift the pump out uh, for maintenance or for changing the pump if it ever stopped working or if it gets clogged. Um, if, it, if I use PVC, it would be quite hard to do that. So I took one of my PVC pipes to the drill press and drilled a series of holes across the pipe. So this is going to be the spray bar that returns water from the sump to the aquarium. And it directs water to flow from left to right to prevent any dead spots where detritus and dirt is going to accumulate. 
So to reduce the amount of evaporation from the sump, I cut up this piece of polycarbonate sheet um, to the right size and cut a hole on the top and at the back to allow the plumbing to pass through. At this stage, I've glued on the tracks for the glass lighting doors and while I'm waiting for it to dry, I started working on the electrical and the lightings. All heat lamps are screwed into a ceramic fitting and those fittings are resting on the piece of plywood block that acts as an insulator. So now that the aquarium is getting filled up, you can see it in action. Here's the spray bar that um, pumps water up from the sump into the aquarium. And as that fills the aquarium up, um, the water is constantly getting drained back into the sump so it will never actually fill up. Um, it goes back into the sump through these PVC pipes down here and where it would go into the first compartment of the sump. Um, in this compartment I've got mainly filter wool and that just acts as a mechanical filtration that filters out the big debris. In the second compartment I've got a bag of scoria rocks or volcanic rocks. Um, this media just pretty much adds more surface area for beneficial bacteria to grow. Um, the third compartment I've got biological filter sponge and in the last compartment again it's a um, bio balls that adds more surface area for beneficial bacteria to grow and water is going to pass through these small holes to the back compartment in this compartment I've only got my heater and the pump there's no filter media in here um, that is to prevent um, it clogging up the pump here the pump pumps water through the flexible hose back into the spray bar as you saw earlier. You should make sure that when you're cutting up your dividers that the height of the divider is lower than the sump so that if one of the compartments get clogged up um, water is not going to just overflow and come out of the sump it will just um, pass over the top of those divisions. It is also a good idea to mark on the side of the sump what the minimum and maximum water level should be so that would help you when you're topping up the aquarium you don't want it to be too low that it doesn't the water line doesn't cover the submersible pump because that would um, overheat the pump when it's running half dry you don't want to fill the sump up too high as well because when the electricity goes out or if the pump stops working some of the water from the main aquarium is going to start flowing down um, and you need to take that into account to prevent it overfilling the sump. I'm pretty impatient so before even getting it done I've let my mangrove monitor go in to have a swim and he seems to really enjoy it. I designed and 3D printed some of these brackets that hold branches. I prefer to do it this way instead of screwing the branches straight into the enclosure because sometimes uh, when I do need to take the branches out to clean or when the branches breaks and rots I could easily replace it without um, creating new holes in the wall of the enclosure. At this point the enclosure is more or less done and I've added a few pieces of driftwood into the aquarium. Uh, that leaches out quite a lot of tannin, but I actually quite like it. It looks more like the actual mangrove habitat in the wild. There were two issues when choosing a substrate for this enclosure. Uh, the first one is that you can't really use things like um, mulch or soil because when it gets into the water it floats and it will just clog up the filter. Um, the second thing is um, the monitor is definitely going to be kicking substrate into the aquarium and that would uh, mix up the substrate in the land area and the aquarium so I decided to just go with the same type I use pool filter sand and that that way um, it's not going to be floating around and clogging up the filters and also it doesn't matter if uh, it gets mixed up every now and then I just need to scoop up some sand from the aquarium section and pour it back up onto the land section so at this stage the aquarium and enclosure has been running on for more than a year now and everything's going great I haven't run into any issues and the filtration has been working very well. I've added some rainbow cichlids and some mosquito fish into the tank. 
um, that actually helps very well with um, stirring up the bottom of the aquarium to prevent things from settling down in the sand. Um, the mangrove monitor seems to leave the fish alone. I've never seen it try and go for and eat the fish. They get along pretty well. So that's it for today's video. Um, I hope you learned something from this build process. See you next time.